the main idea of this is, um, as you will see in the slides, I'm not like all you developers over here ever having this very clean code with all the commands you need. Um, easy to read, easy to, to do. My slides are kind of fucked up. Um, mainly because my arrival was. Um, the last slide was edited about 20 minutes ago. So excuse me, typos and something like that. And the idea of this is, um, I considered myself uh, never a, a hacker. As for example, I don't know how to click to the, yes. Um, exactly because of this, I'm neither a hardware or software engineer. I nearly um, I do things my relatives would consider coding. I wouldn't dare to say it here. It's stealing shell scripts and something like that. Um, what I do was introduced by a uh, stage manager, the name or Harold, I, by the kind Harold, while I was frickling around with my notebook. Uh, oh no, my daughter's, by the way. <laughs> Mine has no proper uh, output for the display. Um, uh, by the way, the second sentence of the describing of my daughter after the IT thing was, but the relevant thing is, and then she starts with the funny things. I loved that because I couldn't have done it up front because everything was messed up. I also built uh, recumbents, that's, that's in Germany, it's Liegerida. I did stuff, I rebuilt my house and things. So, but actually, hardware. First thing is, how do you find interesting projects? I recommend to say, oh, that might interest me. If you're not interested in it, it kind of wouldn't work out, I guess. So, of course, the easiest way to make open hardware in some kind happen is crowdfunding. Um, this, uh, I don't know who knows about this device. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a project on Hacker Day. It's a little Arduino device. It has an um, OLED screen, if I remember correctly, and a touch field. And it, um, it's an offline password keeper. You are, most of you, as I see, are very young and can remember all the passwords and usernames. I'm too old for that. Um, this device is nice because it acts like a normal keyboard. It has USB output for that. It's an Arduino-based smart card reader. Oh, let's screen on a minute. So it's kind of, I still don't know what it is. I say it's three factors because you need the device. All your credits are stored encrypted in it. With this sheet. I always have to read up and have a slight idea of what that means. And you need a smart card and the pin for your smart card. So from my counting is three. Other people call only call it two because of the smart card and, and, and the pin. I always get confused with that. Never mind, I said, that's fine because I hang around on so many inputs. And sometimes I stumble upon say, was I locked in here? Do I have an account? I don't know. And maybe this, this will help in the future. Um, for people who are interested in that, that's uh, um, what sort of smart card it is. No idea what that mean. Developed at Hackaday. And the founding was done through Indiegogo. I guess that might be the first typo in the slides. Um, so they did it kind of in the right way, I think, because they started where already hackers are gathered. I guess Hackaday, a uh, quick thought. Who knows the site Hackaday? Yeah, I guess that much. So I kind of get uh, on cold turkey if I don't read it two or three days. Um, so there was kind of existing community, lots of input uh, contribution from the, from the community saying, oh, that would be nice or that with size and, and all, all this. Um, they had working prototypes, which I really recommend to look out. Kickstarter often hasn't and often fails with projects they don't, where there aren't prototypes. Even though the, clo the, the funding kind of get close to failing. And then you come to a point, if I ever would do a campaign, um, I would think about nice perks to do. Something like, 
oh, I really want this, but I don't want to buy two devices for 150 euros. Maybe there's a little perk I can add to, so if several people do so, it will happen. And they actually have that. They allow you to design your own smart cards. What you see here is actually artwork of a colleague of mine. Uh, and some weird fonts I found. The upper one is something Bernard Shaw in, invented. And the other one is Shadow from Babylon 5, as some might know. Um, it nearly failed anyway. <laughs> it was a lot discussed. Oh, do custom perks and... But they choose wisely because the Indiegogo is allowed to expand the deadline. So if you're unsure about that, you may think about, oh, maybe I want something with a deadline that's allowed to expand for reasons, or maybe there is something where you don't have to reach a goal and communicate what happened. And, um, yeah, there it is, the fucked up slide. Uh, okay, next thing, crowdfund, I did that with a, with a uh, multipath. And I did it with a Novena. I guess I didn't have to explain that much about the Novena project. And I think Bunny's blog is known by enough nerds. I, I kind of stumbled in different ways about it. Sometimes I look, oh, what open hardware is there? And uh, then I found it very early as he was driving us as a hobby project. Uh, I think I stumbled across, I told a friend about another project and that was on 30C3, and I said, oh, maybe you have a give Bunny's project a look. He makes a little gathering, uh, and he had these prototypes here. Uh, it was only two, Zops and, and Bunny's, and they showed it around and asked people, and that's very important, because if you want to do, you finally want to do something people actually want to have, and that will only happen if you talk to them. Otherwise, you have to do this weird stuff companies do. Ah, we are guessing and we are doing marketing. And afterwards, if they fail, we just convince the people they want to have it anyway. So I think it's better to do it the other way around. So crowdfunding started. We have here motherboard only was one thing. Then the desktop thingy, which you just carry on, have to plug in. Then there was a laptop version where you had uh, a battery, um, a little daughter board which does all the charging and recharging stuff of the battery, taking balance of the gas gog and so on. And I really like to have one of those, but $5,000 was a bit over my budget. I actually saw one uh, Bunny has with him. It's really beauty things. Um, so, does anybody see the missing link? Imagine you want to build a notebook of your own. You have the main board, but you missed the battery management board. So you can't have it. And I was kind of one of those guys and said, yeah, okay. I come back to this battery board. We'll hear about it later on. So meanwhile, I said, okay, then I buy the board that's affordable, and I have the board, and then I look. Maybe it's open hardware. Let's look how it works out. So that's really easy. You contribute to the crowdfunding. The crowdfunding ends. The things get produced, packed, and sent. That's very easy until you stumble across these guys. <laughs> Uh, it's customs for those English speaking people. So uh, that's kind of the multipath spent, uh, my multipath spent uh, five weeks in Frankfurt for reasons I really can't understand. So I still think I might ask around in the form how can I figure out if nobody to put weird stuff in it to spy on me? So I'm kind of uh, not comfortable with yeah, that. And I said, yeah, that would be fun when the novena arrives. And suddenly I said, oh. I called him and said, yeah, I found it that about half a year ago. I have no idea which way I paid it. Yeah, never mind. Was it? Oh, that was crowdfunding. Oh, it was Kickstarter. Um, no, they're not. It's about the other platform. It's crowd supply in that case. Yeah, yeah, just sent us the screenshots, described what the market, and it worked out. And I said, so 
okay, on the one hand, five weeks. On the other, yeah, yeah, no problem. We know about crowdfunding. These guys are normally kind of behind. So crowdfunding, I don't know. So I was really aroused of that. So conclusion is they are completely unpredictable. Um, my daughter has a girlfriend, and she came up with a sentence that might best fit these guys. Kill them with kindness. Um, I confess I fail half of the time, but they, they seem to have a training how to make people really angry with three sentences. Um, I try to get, so you, anytime you get something across the borders, you need to figure out how it works this time. Um, oh, another fact. <laughs> um, so the idea is use the right platform, look which one works for you, pro your project. Um, communicate as much as you can before in forums, in, on CCC events, whatever, so that you find out what the people like and want to have everywhere. As said, the Novena project came from two directions, one I didn't even expect that, that it would come back that way. Um, if the community really exists, before, it's a lot more helpful. We come to that um, later. Mm, sometimes it's essential. Um, oh, that was too fast, never mind. So that was the crowdfunding part. This is kind of the beginner's part. Um, and the next part is kind of learn from others. I guess some of the people having a Pandora and waiting for, waiting for the Pyra in the audience now from some I actually know. Um, this is not something I really did, but this is a nice project to look and learn things, how things fail, how you correct them, and we're going through that right now. The storyline of this is, they started from gaming hand, little gaming handhelds. Um, that was Nintendo all the way. I really hadn't contact in this era with anything, and then there were devices like the one on the right side, and then the hacking started because you had a point where you can link in. These are smart media cards. <laughs> Half of you wouldn't know about it, I think, without looking it up in Wikipedia. Um, it's now SD cards. Um, after, um, and then there was a gaming console that had an embedded Linux kind of, um, it was an accident from the producer. They just took it and don't really know about it. Um, there was a lot of hacking with these devices, which I didn't know about before I found the Pandora project. There were several derivates of it, and there was a big community about that. And the next device about open hardware is just think about, oh, can we build something really big? And that's what the, what the guys of the community from the handhelds did. They simply said, it was original an April's food joke to say, oh, what would the perfect gaming console look like? And then they started, oh, I want keyboard, and I want that, and that, and that. Um, and they just, and then was the idea, yeah, well, why not? Um, so they sorted out what might be realistic, what is useful, what's really doable. And they actually found 3,000 people sp spending 300 euros completely aware that it would take several, a lot of months, maybe several years. Uh, it took in the end much longer than they expected. Um, and that was the idea what it should look like. It's a kind of um, be ahead in my phone, but I didn't find a better picture. Um, so it should, the idea was making an ARM mini computer using Linux. Um, it's in some ARM CPU, I, I forgot, I have to look it up again, it's not what I, And the hardware finally was freed in 2015, the project started in 2008. <laughs> it, no, and the hardware was freed, the devices were produced earlier. So, um, uh, there was, or oh, there, there was, uh, the, the, it's had, lots of beautiful things, like a little PDF that was a hardware hacking guide, where you can look, oh, we can solder the LED here and uh, put it to this GPIO and make funny stuff with it and something like that. 
It has two full-sized SD ports, two USB ports, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, touchscreen, resistive, which I like a lot more than uh, Capertis, uh, the, the other one. Um, <laughs> because your screen stays clear, uh, clean, um, it was, so they started already with an existing community, so it was comp a complete community project. Um, and as it added the things missing on the other consoles, you had to have a full keyboard to operate on, so you can use it for work as good as for gaming. Um, so that was the easy part. Oh, it kind of reminded me that, that this slide is work in progress. I guess it's now done. Um, <laughs> so, so there were several problems. The first one, crazy as it sounds, they first thought of, oh, how, sh how expensive should it be? And then they try to reach a goal. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> um, then they kind of I still have that completely figured out in my head. Um, they kind of split the responsibility they had Evil Dragon, one who was very active in the, in the GP2X forums, had an own shop for these consoles and something like that, and he was attached to take care of the community, and they had another person in, in project lead. So whenever something happens, he kind of was only the guy communicating to the community. Um, then, very, very bad trick is if you have one guy designing the case and the producer on a different continent, I think in this case it was the designer was an US American and they tried to produce it at low cost in China. These things, are I think they only can fail because whenever you have a problem, the designer says, oh yeah, yeah, the producer guy is doing it wrong. The producer says, oh no, 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 we know about producing. You did something wrong in the, in the design. And then you have half a day time lag in between. You have probably one or three languages in between. Uh, so if you have somebody you personally know in China, in the producing company, that might work. But this setup didn't. So the cases kind of had a problem all the time. Then he dropped his, oh, that's a cool job. I cancel my day job and try to earn the money with that. Also a bad idea. Um, and because of that, because he kind of was, oh, this must work, he kind of started to not tell people about the problems. He kind of was anxious that, that he, he, he loses trust from the community. The thing is, quite the opposite happens. Um, uh, yeah, and if that's not enough, <laughs> of course, if it started that way, it goes only down from there. And he even tried to hide that and said, oh yeah, we have problems in delivery if you pay about not 240, but 440, you will be a privileged and get one of the first devices. And finally, that came to the total stop and the mentioned Evil Dragon took over the project lead two and said, so now sort these things out. And first thing he did is, okay, what went? The what? Yeah, that came to the, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Re repeat the first three places. Oh, sorry. Um, the funds was f frozen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was really as many as could go wrong did go wrong. And so Evil Dragon started to say, okay, I was bound to this point, and now I'm taking project lead, and he starts, that went wrong, that went wrong, that went wrong. And I have several ideas how to, to, to get this done. First thing was he, took the production to Germany, which is, of course, more expensive to produce it here, but he says it's about 20 minutes bicycle ride to the facility where they're producing the PCB boards. So whenever a problem happens, he's there on the instant. Um, and he communicates everything. Whenever there is something 
I have kind of the idea. And he's, he can't be sleeping anyway. Um, <laughs> and whenever he comes to a problem, five minutes later, it's a post in the forum. And that builds trust because they say, okay, of course there are problems, but if we know about it, we might even help. And that happens a lot, nearly the whole software, by the way. And for the new project, uh, there wouldn't have been a keyboard if not a hint from the forum members. Um, he took in investors to get rid of the, of the pressure to, to, to have, so he got more time basically. He said, okay, we have that, and they rely on him, and he even thought, so now the guy said, kind of hang in air by the others, because they had two selling points. He, his kind of worked, and the other funds were thrown, so I think in 2010, the product, or 2011, finally the first devices came out, so two or three, ye three years after the first starting point. And there are still guys hanging kind of in air because they still didn't get their devices they gave money for in 2008. And Evil Dragon is kind of a person who even holds them. They say, okay, if you're doing it, we are patient and wait even longer. Um, so, community is essential. Even better when it exists. Uh, one point, for example, is this, um, that's kind of something the developers will most likely understand best. There's an uh, open source driver for one of the GLS chips that was originally invented for the Pandora and was then taken over in the ARM HF Debian tree. I if I remember correctly, I'm not that deep into it. Um, direct consumer input is good. Things can go wrong anyway, as I showed. Um, of course, it was developed partially by the future con consumers, so you have no steps in between these, these uh, development. Um, and what they did, they made it very easy to contribute. They made a known kind of package system for the Pandora, so it was very easy to convert all retro gaming, uh, all retro games, and had a system where everybody just could copy it on the SD card, plug it in in the Pandora, and could play. Um, and the last step, just it was on Christmas, he merged all the forums, the GP2X, uh, the Pandora, and the new Piva for us, so that they are all in one place, so that, that you have the forums, the history, at one place to look at. Mm. The, com the software development is done, I say, 90% by the community. Here are a few shots of what there is, that, that's just the uh, most uh, downloaded apps that are there, just, it's just to hint you what happens there. There are a few screenshots of nearly a thousand games, developments, 60 office uh, things, utilities, all you want to play around with the open hardware Linux device, you can imagine. So, then you come to a point where it's kind of start difficult to produce things because certain chipsets aren't produced anymore. And at that point he said, yeah, well, we can't produce them anymore. We have about 200 left we can produce. How would a successor look like? Um, and they started discussion, said, oh, well, keep the good things and fix the bad ones. You have to endure a lot of communications. There are about 30 threads about the keyboard layout. Um, the problem with that is you can only afford one keyboard layout in these small amounts of devices. And then you have the problem you have German, English, French guys all contributing a lot, so you should listen to them to lo lose them. I kind of lose interest and said, oh, there will be a mapping somehow, and I. Then I'm forced to learn it typing blind, which I wanted to do for about 20 years now, and didn't 
managed to so far. Maybe the device is forcing me to. Um, they then said, well, the next problem was the case design. And he simply said, I let it design by a company. So it's kind of hard to blame someone else and say, oh, the company did it. Yeah, that's the one you work for. The machines are right to your next door. You should get it done. And that works perfectly, and it's now in Greece. And he said, that's fine, because if there's a problem, if I have to go there, I can simply fly there by plane. It's from Germany to Greece. It's kind of more easy than to go to China. And they speak English and German, so the communication is a lot better over there. Um, the PCB design was done by Nicolas Schaller. Lots of you will know he's the one who made the last upgrade of the uh, OpenMoco phone. He has their own company developing uh, embedded Linux devices. And so they took him in to make the B PCB design for the new one. Um, they even li live kind of near. And uh, Nicolas is living near to the producing company of the PCB boards. He, if there's any problem, then he just goes over there and fixes it. And from what he learned before, he said, well, with my other job and the selling of the device, uh, of the gaming devices and so on, I think I have enough money to finance the pro until the prototypes. So he said, I will never, I will take money from you when I have working prototypes, not before. That's the idea. If I have working prototypes, I can calculate what prices it might be in the end and have a, a wouldn't fail on that point. At least. Um, the next step is the hardware is now upgradable. You have a main board and you have a, a daughter board where the SOC sits on and the memory. So the machine will be upgradable. It might even be able to change platform so you can simply by a hardware switch go from, uh, from ARM to AMD or something like that. But that's future talk. First, is you have an extra daughter board. And they have a, a, um, a third PCB for the display. So if the display has a problem, um, you, can, you don't have to change something on the, on the main board. You have the same communication channel. Uh, OS will be Damien Arm instead of Angstrom because there is, um, the, the, the NAND storage was kind of too small. And it's now an uh, EMMC chip. I have, to, um, uh, I have to hurry a bit right now, I see. So the main things, at least from my view, it's uh, OMAP uh, 5432. Uh, five, the interesting part is there will be a um, uh, 3G, 4G UMTS chip on it. But now we're having open hardware. And this chip is closed. Lots of discussions again. And the solution is um, this chip is switched off by completely cutting the power on a GPIO pin of the main processor. So it is off because it has no power. I don't know of any other device having that. And if you're more paranoid, you can get it without. Um, there's a mentioned uh, eight uh, gigabyte EMMC chip where now the uh, operating system will run. Um, sound is nice, that says nothing to me, might be to you, but the interesting part is you have a volume wheel. It's a resistor, a changeable, and you have a hardware where you can turn power, I love that. Um, the keyboard will get better. It has three rows now. It will be backlit. And there are um, um, four lateral buttons. We, can, we will see that very soon. Uh, 6,000 milliampere lithium polymer. It's good for 10 hours gaming, as it's not now guessed. That's what the backside will look like. And there you see the three lateral buttons. That means if you're typing on the keyboard, you have all your modifiers key on your fingertips too. So you can do the modifier text with, with two of your fingers and the keyboard with the thumbs. That's very cool. Uh, it will have an ES data port with an adapter to one of the USB ports. It's for space reasons. Additional to the operating system card, you have, again, two full-sized SD card slots. And it's all designed to be on the backboard. So you can later on plug it in an, in an cradle and use it as a full desktop with keyboard and monitor. 
because of that HDMI too. Um, that's a step in between. On the right, you see the old Pandora. On the left, uh, you see the Pyra. Um, it has now a bigger screen with the configuration you see over there. There's something about these screens are produced for, for smart uh, phones and something, and they have to be portrait, and there's something weird technique to make them landscape. I don't understand. So if anybody knows about the screen with a landscape, might be bunnies over here somewhere, and he's in Shenzhen next time and finds the display for us. Um, and there we have it. That's a live view of the production, I'd say. That's a, f a few weeks ago. The PCBs on the left are directly the first one ever soldered in the oven, and he is simply with this, um, the second photo is the one with, from the daughter board with the CPU. And the first one, yeah, they came out here and they failed. Um, then, and he said how they corrected. The other one is the backlit keyboard they tested online, and the others are pictures from milling the molds for the Pyra. Or nearly online. He was there and posted directly from the facility. Great. There was this story. It took about three posts after, oh, should we do a successor? The first one came up with shut up and take my money. And that started from day one. Uh, and every time he said, oh, we solved that problem, shut up and take my money. He said, no, I said no pre-orders. <laughs> and no fixed release day, we release when we like Debian. And quite a while ago, he said, okay, for all you guys always crying around, shut up and take my money, I give you three, uh, 200 pre pre orders numbered with the extra PCB signed, and eight of the prototypes the develops, uh, developers don't need. They will be 1,400 euros. The pre pre order is 290, and the difference is when you get it. And he said, he thought he might sell 40 or 50. Uh, three days, and everything was gone. <laughs> That's what trust does. So, because I'm a bit in the hurry, you remember the missing link? So I thought, yeah, they did something. I think I learned something. I did crowdfunding. So, first, thanks for Bunny to making the flower with a battery bot. And that makes me encourage myself and said, well, it's open hardware. So, plan A, I just need to find the info, the producers, and go on. Easy. Um, first thing is, uh, it might be polite to ask, are you planning to pr produce them? Otherwise, I produce them, maybe they might be pissed. And so I asked him and he said, yeah, go on, nice, cool. That's what open hardware is about. So I get that infos. Um, and first I asked for the bare PCB to say, oh, we populated ourselves by hand or something like that. Um, I have a very cool shortcut here. My wife is working at the company doing PCBs. So the, I said, hey, you were working there for 25 years. Did you ever get some, did you ever take a fortune of that? And said, go to your show and ask what is it. So we got that very cheap. And she's actually at the point where you collect the data and check if they are producible, if there are any errors. Um, there was not an error. There was a slight thing to improve. I forgot what it was. I have to ask her and maybe pass it on to Bunny. Um, then you ask. I said, oh, I ask. It's, um, there's something of, you, you have a standard measurement you put through the machines, and you normally say, oh, you have the standard measurement, how many boards fit in it? And then you have a price for a whole lot to produce, and I simply ask in the community, oh, what's the interest for that? And there was enough interest, and I said, so, it's easy. Make it, get it, send it, done. Yeah, produce it. This is a picture of the nice board. But then it's coming, uh, it might be wise to buy these parts in a lot, isn't it? Because it's cheaper then. Uh, yeah, okay, let's look at that. So it's, okay, you produce BCB, you order parts in a lot, put them together and send them in. So then we're done, right? Yeah, there are lots of in expensive parts and they're very small. What about to ask? How much is it to populate it anyway? Uh, okay, you get the info, you ask prices, yeah. you order together, and then you're done, right? Um, yes, nearly. 
Um, because if you do something like that, if you populate the board, you do it like it's on the left side. There's small pieces, as told us from the Pandora form. Um, you see something that looks like it's broken off after producing. And that is how they adjust the boards. There are the signs, uh, the board is here, and then the machine can know where the actual component is to be placed. But that was already missing. Um, okay. Some of the companies said, yeah, no problem, we can do it anyway, it's a bit more complicated. And with every of this information, of course, you communicate to the producer and you go back to the community, well, I heard that and that and that, and it might be a bit more expensive. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, so then you go on, you send them the bonds, bill of material, um, and the next pain you get from that is easy describable by two words. That's annoying. <laughs> okay, you go through it, I ask Bunny, yeah, everything is in metric. Um, the interesting part, I found a comparison sheet. So the first point people normally stumble upon is this one. Say, oh, might that be a typo because the very small one is in, we can't do, no, 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 it's metric, it's okay. Um, not that we have the problem not in another point. <laughs> Or another. So, uh, yeah, you go through it again and then say, oh, it's a metric 04 or 02. Oh, no, sorry, then we can't do it. And I was back to the phone and said, oh, no. We had everything together, and now they say they mixed up the imperial and the metric, so they can't do it. Um, so, we won't get it. And the interesting part is if you communicated what I learned from the Pandora guys was, yeah, no problem. Then it's bare PCBs and we populate them themselves. And that was kind of something I said, oh, that's so cool and so refreshing. Okay, I go on and ask and search for the next populators. Um, for a slightly higher price, I say, yeah, we can do it. We have, um, we need to, they use other points to fix the board then. Then use your testing spots on the board and things like on, so they can do it. And then you're done. Same procedure. Yes! Then you're done. And one day, these things actually arrived, populated at my home, that are the two pictures from them. Um, I did that very close uh, before the 31C3. Um, I went to Bunny, who, and that's one of the interesting points. Imagine, so I imagine I want a Samsung phone. I found the schematics. I said, oh, I want to build it myself. Yeah, yeah, go on. And when I have done it, I go to the chief developer on Samsung. Oh, can you flash me the firmware? Yeah, well, of course. Uh, that's kind of what happened here. I like this one much better. I expect the other won't happen. Um, so. Sending then, it's a bit tedious work. You have to pack 30 parcels, look just a bit um, of custom stuff, but it's easy. You finally have to find a number. The kill them with kindness worked. I said, oh, if something like this and this, can you give me some number I have to write on the, so on the customs declaration? He said, yeah, no problem. And that worked, kind of. But then I looked at my bank account. Um, it's German there. It's AWM Meldepflicht beachten, Bundesbank. There's something of beware of the obligation of AV, oh, AWV. It's um, Außenwirtschaft, it's something foreign transfers and fair things. What the fuck? With this hotline? One, two, three, four, one, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> My spam alert triggered by that. <laughs> and by the way, then I go to the, the bank teller, clerks, whatever they, they are called, and say, I have something weird here on my, uh, uh, can you explain it to me? Yeah, yeah, well, that's uh, what the guy who's sending the money is, right? So I don't think so, he's Belgian. I don't think he's telling me something of the German Federal Bank. Oh yeah, uh, oh wait, I ask a colleague. 
and he's coming, I have some weird stuff here. And they're saying, yeah, yeah, that's the stuff the guy who's sending you the money is. Uh, no, he's Belgian. I don't think he's writing me something in German. But, oh, well, uh, let's ask a colleague. And <laughs> But the third one was the one, yeah, we are writing that down. There is an obligation. Um, you have to, if you get a certain amount of money from, from foreign countries, you have to report it. I think it's something about washing drug, skill, drug uh, money or something like that. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> Nine euros. Um, that was a guy with a blank PCB. There was one who wanted to buy a PCB anyway because he bought the components already. So it would have been very easy to find that information. I think the bank guys took about 10 minutes Googling to find it. Easy. You go to Bundesbank, Federal Bank. There's a point service. There's a reporting system, Meldewesen. That's even not a light word for, for Germans. Then there's external sector. Then you have FAQ and notices, and then you have cross-border payment reports, and there you find who is subject to reporting requirements and what information has to be provided. Ah, uh, yeah. And then there it is. If you have amount of 12,500 euros, then you have to report that you get the money and what for. Yeah, nice, that's only 1,388 transfers of nine euro. Yeah, okay, to be fair, it's only 80, 80 for the battery board prices. But that's kind of um, gross. Um, so, cool, we are finally done. Uh, until you find a guy in the phone and said, well, I got your battery board, but it kind of has a weird problem. Okay, I transferred with him. Sobs was, um, was looking uh, uh, into it, uh, reading, uh, reading uh, logs and things, and it was kind of uh, no idea. So next nice point, I uh, planned a meeting with Bunny again, who designed it. And said, well, we, we have this weird problem. Would you mind if, if we look it up, if I get some tools over there? Um, there's a guy in the nearby hacker space, Jochen. He's, he's kind of the quiet guy. But if you ask him, I know you have some experience with a microscope and the soldering iron with a fine tip, yeah, yeah. And he comes with about this aluminum box of tools. Then there was eight dot, another guy who bought a novena who was bringing his novena and, and, better, and, and his battery. Um, um, and we fixed that yesterday. It was a lot of fun to do, and it was important that Everybody of us was there. Maybe I was the most sparrow part there. <laughs> um, Bunny was there looking at the schematics. Uh, it dot provided, so, oh, we can bridge it with Siri report to find it. And we find the error. It was a resistor, if I remember it correctly, measuring the, the voltage. And it was labeled wrong. It came from the rail and was one magnitude off. <laughs> we resolded it and had it fixed. Do that with a broken Samsung phone with a head of development over there. So now we are done, yeah. Um, until somebody asks, oh, are there still boards left? Uh, no, but if there's interest, and that was a week ago, there were 15 guys going up again, so I might do the next run too. Um, It means probably it's never done, but it's fun. <laughs> so what do you get back? The people thank you every year, even if you say, oh, I failed, they can't produce it. Yeah, never mind, thank you for your work, and gives a better PCB. Interesting payment behavior, I said, it's 160 for the boards, and I suddenly had something 200. I said, oh, well, that's 200. Yeah, yeah, if something went wrong, so that you are not spending your money on it. <laughs> um, and something like Bunny says, oh, well, thanks that you produce what I designed. <laughs> I love that. You have a lot of fun. You get unique devices, as you see with the Pandora and the Novena. Um, so some com 
occlusions, mind, personalities, communicate, have patience in the discussions, in the end something good will come out, talk a lot, start as a hobby of course, to not be in a, in a kind of forced situation, uh, start copying someone, like I did with a bot, um, but calculate the spare. The working battery board was mine, I finally gave to the other guy with the broken one, and now I have one back again, it's a fixed one. Um, release when ready, and never hide problems. Worked out for me and others. So, I had to think a bit philosophical. So was it worth all it? I, I think so, it was fun. So what to do for me? I think doing this old stuff and doing it, it might even start me with not a lot of knowledge to start a own project, little one. Start little ones. I'm planning to do a little um, board that can um, put the old ThinkPad keyboards to convert that you can plug it in um, on USB and not, uh, use it as an Arduino or something like that. So was it hacking? Yeah, well, um, I didn't design a board. I didn't write a single line of codes. I know people who say that wasn't hacking. Um, yeah, well, I kind of sometimes think um, it's like a carpenter saying, you're a plumber, then you're not a craftsman because you're using other tools. I, I think, from my point of view, is to brighten. If I teach, for example, if I teach somebody a craft, whatever, goldsmithing, blacksmithing, whatever, I open a gated community. These were, were, were communities where when you finished your education, you were forced to swear to tell nobody, not your... To, so I opened that a bit, I guess. Uh, I see hacking as a state of mind. Change something, do something yourself. So, finally I come to the thanks to let it there. Of course my children, they teach me some lectures of the Empress, which I didn't know. Uh, who, who didn't do it, read the text my daughter wrote about the boat. I couldn't have come near to it, not 5%. Um, the multipass developers, of course, uh, all the Pandora guys uh, mentioned some of the form, Notas, Linux, Boss. Um, just read it through because we are kind of uh, on tight schedule here. Um, oh, that was wrong. Yep. Ten minutes. So we have, uh, I tried to get the... Yeah, so Thanks, give slide back. So we have that in the background. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the talk and thanks for sharing all your experience points you uh, gained on your mission on the way to uh, these devices. Um, if there are any questions, uh, please go to the microphones on the left and the right. Uh, and are there any questions from the internet? At the moment, there are no questions from the internet. Okay, then. So, I, either it was too confusing or too good? <laughs> You have explained everything, so... Oh shit, no questions. <laughs> so why did I hurry when there are no questions? <laughs> What's, next? Yeah, what What's next? next? Yeah, I guess um, I'm first going for the... Um, uh, I, I look, I, I guess there might be some more guys rowing up now for the next Novena uh, Sinoko boards, if they are... Uh, in, if there's enough demand, I think I can do that easily, and there are no obs obstacles like you have seen. <laughs> um, and I, I kind of like the idea to first step the old palm foldable keyboards. The mentioned little converting board should be for work for the foldable keyboards to make them a USB device, and for the ThinkPads, um, ThinkPad keyboards to convert them. Yeah, there is a question on the left microphone. Um, did you have any problems with the uh, e EU recycling uh, um, legislation? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> But 
But now the question is on the internet. Thank you for that. <laughs> I think there was a talk at the, one of the second conferences about that. If you uh, want to look it up, it's on Media CCC. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Uh, there is a question, can you share best practices to set a price? Uh, producing in Germany might be much easier, but might cost so much that no one will buy it. Um, it's, for the Pandora project, it's not true, actually. Um, the, the target price for the Pyra is 600 euros. And the people rowing up, as you have seen, yeah. three days throwing money around. <laughs> So I think that's important that the communication beforehand was that they say, this device is so cool and so that what I wanted, that the people simply say, it's worth the money. And they know whenever you come back, um, um, people like Evil Dragon and like Bunny are always uh, determined to fix things because I like that. We had two hours of fun finding the, the, the error was, was uh, imagine the possibility on a rail of resistors. We had 30 boards, and we picked one faulty resistor from that rail that was 10 times off. <laughs> and we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> so then, thanks a lot at the end, and give a big shout <laughs> to Mr. McLean. Woo!